This is the one true Omni Gamer Boss Braun. This is the information line for True Backlash. And the first lady of media blue. Coming to you with another movie review. And guess what? It's ladies only. You know, there's a movie, uh, I don't know, called something Mike with some magical and uh, it's extreme, extreme large. Uh, oh, Magic Mike XXL. And that is a special kind of movie, which since has dealings with uh, nudity of the uh, male variety, and uh, we like women, me and uh, Backlash here, uh, we have no interest in such things. So, it was up to the, 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 the lost solemn duty of Blue and her two friends, who are not here yet, or I guess not here at all, I don't know, to watch the movie in our stead. And, well, Blue, how did you like it? Well, you know, it was a really difficult assignment. I say, it was, I, it was pretty hard, if you know what I mean. I mean, yeah. I, I know there was some tough going. It's like uh, all, all, all that flesh out of nowhere, that scared the heck out of me. I could barely stand it. <laughs> I know, it's like all those, like, no class men just shoving their business in your business. I mean, that would be the worst thing ever. Actually, there was one of every class, oh. so there was a lot of that. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. Uh, for people who don't know, she's got a big old smile heel to ear, so it's kind of it's kind of hard to uh, represent that in audio. But I figured I'd do my due diligence and tell you how her expressions are. Absolutely, one picture is worth a thousand words. And, and you know what? It's crazy. It, it seems like the perfect setup for a comic book movie. Duke, G.I. Joe's Duke, who is uh, apparently going to be the future Gambit. Former w, uh, former WWE and WCW heavyweight champion, who was also the Super Shredder. The Billy Bully Flash Thompson of the Spider-Man series. And the classy white-collar thief, Neil Caffrey. It has, it had it all, only to reveal that they're all strippers. Yeah. Male strippers. In case you all didn't know that nice little tempting fact, this is certainly not a movie for the kids. Not the kids. But I will say, it is a girls' night out movie. I'm not even sure if boyfriends and husbands or sons or son-in-laws will enjoy the movie, but I have to tell you, it is a girls' day. It's all kind of goodness. It depends on your level of uh, certain areas. You know, you may I'll find that I'm you, sure certain you're areas. not really comfortable with a lot of what you're about to see. Um, I'm not sure if any of you have plans to see Magic Mike XXL. And uh, if you have not seen their first Magic Mike movie, you may want to pick up a video or you may want to check it out on On Demand if you have that available in your area and just take a look at that first. And if you think you're tough enough for that, then certainly you want to go see Magic Mike XXL because this one, as stated by Chan of Tating, is over the top. It's, it's, it's full on, it's way more, but it's, it's well done and I really enjoyed it. So what's the story exactly? Or is that just something asking too much for this movie? No, actually, it's a very good question. I'm glad you asked it, because in, in fact, it does have a plot. Even though I'm, I'm sure as many other people that have seen this movie, plot was really like reading Playboy for the articles, if you know what I mean. Those being Playgirl? Well, it's kind of like an inverse for those male guys out there that are listening. But you're right, it's like the inverse. So, you know, I actually found that the plot kind of picks up at the end of where the first one left off. But if you didn't see Magic Mike, you won't really miss anything in the detail because you can kind of pretty much be up to speed from the very first scene. So it takes place pretty much with a young man played by Channing and he pretty much really kind of wants to do more with his life, not because he doesn't enjoy what his previous nightlife uh, occupation has presented him with, but because he's always had um, um, a wealth 
of other things that he's good at and try and try and try as you may you know he wasn't able to get the type of support in the way of funding and other things that traditionally would be offered to a person of such um, you know business interests so with that being said it's almost like you know he got an invitation and I won't go into too much detail about that um, to come back and see the old gang while they were in his neck of the woods. He takes on a younger understudy, uh, quite by circumstance, and uh, all kinds of fun ensue from there. All right, now, what would you say is good parts of the movie? And I can only imagine <laughs> what kind of good parts you're just about to tell me, so please keep it clean. Oh, rats, do you really want me to keep this clean? Please, we, we have children who sometimes frequent our site looking to see if this is something mommy and daddy should, you know, let me see. Well, no, kids, this is not. No, it, it is not. But I will say, um, glad you pointed out the fact that I might go there on the good parts, because there were really so many. But I gotta say in a very high-level summary sort of way, that the dancing, the, the action, um, Channing is, Channing is quite gifted, Joe Manganiello quite gifted. These folks are, are very entertaining in their own right. Um, I think the overall personality of the characters are something that endear you to the movie. It's not just a big meat show. It really isn't. It's something that you, you kind of care about these guys. You know, I'm an Entourage fan. We've talked oh, about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! <laughs> and it's kind of like Entourage, kind of like on, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't want to go there and say XXL, but dare I say it, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, they're a bunch of guys get together, enjoy each other's company, they have a blast, they run into all kinds of mayhem, but they have uh, the bodies to pull it off, they, oh, yeah, they got the moves to pull it off, and Channing used to be in, uh, I think, um, Help Me Out, Backlash, he uh, was a dancer? Joe? No, wasn't he in... Oh, yeah, he was a, he was a, actually a, a, an actual stripper. And the, yeah, but even beyond, well, yeah, that's something else I wanted to bring up, but even beyond that, one of his earlier movies, I think it was, maybe it was Boss Bronze. Did you tell me about Channing being a dancer in Step Something? Yeah, he's in Step Up, the, the movie Step Up. That's where it gave, gave, got its claim to fame, and that, that was a movie. That's pretty cool because, you know, I, I, I can't help but think that all those folks like myself who are trying to figure out how we can marry Ch Channing, mm -hmm. <laughs> he's already married to his co-star of that movie. I think you said that before. I, well, I don't know if I mentioned it before or after our cut scene, so I thought I'd throw it out there again because <laughs> we all, it's, it's weighing heavily on our minds. But you know, I actually thought the characters in the movie were amazing. And I think, uh, Backlash, there was something you were telling me about uh, the characters that you noticed. Even though you didn't see the movie, you always have these, uh, I don't know, updates and backstories. Well, I just wanted to say these guys are like middle-aged. They're really old. Middle-aged! <laughs> <laughs> As a wrestling fan, I do know Nash is in his mid fifties. Okay. You know, I mean, he's been he's been working it since the Attitude Era, NWO Era. Cause uh, Joe, I don't think he is. And he's thirty eight. He's oh, actually he thirty eight. He's just that's, he's that's a, not middle aged though. That's not. Well, let's see. Beth no, Bone was thirty seven, and uh, Chetty Tatum was thirty five. He's so fine. Let me tell you, and, and, those guys and are and fine. They're, they're, <laughs> the, the fifth co star, Adam Rodriguez, best known for his work at CSI Miami. Yeah. He's forty. So. He's a whopping 40. Yeah. What about the guy who played uh, the, the, the Caucasian gift to... Joe Manganiello? No, no, no. The, 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 oh, you don't know. You know, Matt Boomer, the guy, brown-haired guy? Right. That, that's Matt Boomer. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Well, yeah. for me, I guess, in, in an essence, there's just so much good about the movie because the way they move and the way they look. And I think I even saw a little clip on, uh, I don't know, Kathy or, or I don't know, who is the guy? Michael? Michael, by the way, was in the movie, Michael Strahan. So I think it was Kelly. Yeah, I heard about Kelly that. Kelly and Michael. And he did a really great job. Was but he a stripper too? Or? Yeah, he was. Oh, boy. <laughs> we got to get some color in their song. Hey, so. but it, well, there, was, there was a lot of that to go around. <laughs> there, it, was, it was just well-rounded on so many levels. I'm sure I mean, they were all well-rounded. Even Jada Pinkett was in it, and 
and she was amazing in her role as well. And it kind of puts me a little bit on her role that she plays in Gotham. Yeah, she, yeah, and I was about to ask if she kind of like a fish booty. Is that would make me afraid? She's just. I was just thinking that. I was just thinking that. <laughs> you know, it's interesting that you say that, gentlemen, because even though she was sort of in the role of that fish booty esque, she was a more gentler, sexier. Movie, I would actually like to see that, not this hard woman that's gonna kill people just to stare across her. I know, right? But even even Channing had stated he asked Michael on that Kelly and Michael show, uh, you know, like while we were on set, we virtually were not allowed to eat anything. They had to stay so slim that they couldn't eat any of their favorite foods. They could they had to starve. So the whole time that we're looking at abs up there on the stage. They did such great sacrificing for us. Yeah. So you see, ladies, men have to start themselves too to look good. To look that pretty, you yeah. better believe it. Hey, it's, that's what it's called acting. That's what it's called acting. So those are my likes. All right. What about your dislikes? My dislikes were very, very, very few. Um, I thought for um, what I had expected to see, I have never been to a strip club. I've never been to see any of the things that may go on in a male strip show uh -huh. um, so for me to see a couple of those things right out of the gate I found them somewhat startling <laughs> <laughs> to say the least I quickly did get <laughs> caught up and uh, I quickly got used to them but I thought you know it, 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 it it was intense for a moment there. I'm glad I went with the girls. I would, would not have wanted to do this like on a date or I would not have wanted to do this in mixed company with people I barely knew. I would only want to do this with people I knew well and, and, and girls that were going to the movies for the same reasons as, as me. Um, I also thought that, you know, uh, I didn't go there for the plot, okay? Even though the plot was there, I went there to go see Beefcake, and I got my share of that. But I still wish they could have fleshed out a couple of facets. There's plenty of flesh. Da, 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 da. <laughs> you know, just a little bit. I mean, it didn't have to, the fact that they, if they didn't change this thing, I would still thought that, you know, these are nitpick things that I have. But uh, it would have been nice just to get a little bit more backstory on a few of the characters that I didn't see in in, in episode one because I went and saw that the day before or in this XXL. So those couple things, that's about it. I mean, and I don't want to spoil it, but there are a couple characters um, that didn't make the movie this time. And when you go to see it, you'll probably know who I would have liked to have seen a little bit more. Um, even if it was just a real quick little video montage of where they're at, where that where are they now it was just discussed in in one or two quick conversations but that was about it well you know outside of you know your dislikes likes and probably general be kfitude you're honest your true honest uh, true honest rating for this uh, fantastic piece of cinema this fantastic piece of cinema gets a platinum plus and as I told the girls that I attended this fabulous thespian affair, that this is one DVD I can't wait to purchase. <laughs> uh, I'm sure. Just don't bring that DVD over to show us, please. Oh, oh you're safe. This is definitely going to be the evening with a glass of wine and maybe a good book while I'm watching, okay? Yeah, definitely keep that to yourself. Okay. So... <laughs> I am glad you enjoyed it. Something for the ladies, you know, often enough we men folk get all the sexy clad women's and I do appreciate that. Thank you very much, Hollywood. But something for the ladies too every once in a while is appreciated as you just heard this gushing review from the one inspirational emperor, no, what's the wrong one? Uh, first lady of media, blue. See, I'm doing it now. <laughs> and this is the one true on the gamer boss bronze, the information emperor true backlash. And one very Happy, happy first lady of media with this assignment, Blue Magic Mike. Oh yeah! Man. You you know what that means next time. Next time I gotta send you out and watch a cartoon movie by yourself. Oh, great. 
I think you'll love that equally as well. Oh, great. <laughs> next, next sequel, Magic Mike 4XT. <laughs> 4XLT. 4 Ice T. Oh, Magic Mike the Lego movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just had like, it's just a, a yellow brick with abs painted on. With a whole bunch of Legos all stacked. Uh -huh. Magic Mike 70, the magic is back. <laughs> <laughs>